tonight on Discovery. Renu, Renu, Mohammed bin Salman, better known as MBS, was born on August 31st, 1985. He is a member of the Saudi royal family and now holds the positions of Crown Prince 2017 and Prime Minister 2017 of Saudi Arabia. He also served as Defense Minister from 2015 to 22. He is the child of Fata bint Fal Ibn Son, the third wife of Saudi King Salman bin Abdulaziz. Early years. Muhammad had a keen interest in politics at a young age while following his father and becoming self-aware. Along the process, he picked up skills for interacting politely with a range of dignitaries and avoiding misdemeanors. He studied law at King Saud University in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, and received his bachelor's in the field in 2007. He a while later established various firms and a charitable association expected to advance business in the realm. In 2009, he turned into a conventional counselor to his dad, who was then legislative leader of Riyadh. As Salman rose in rank and impact, in the long run becoming crown sovereign in 2012, his believed child Muhammad rose with him, in charge of defense and economic policy. In January 2015, Saudi Arabia's King Abdullah died and Salman became king. Muhammad was given his defense ministerial position right away. Muhammad aggressively started a military intervention in Yemen's civil war in a matter of months. Operation Decisive Storm was a campaign designed to give Yemeni President ABD Rabu Mansur Hadi's administration a decisive edge over the Shiite Houthi insurgency in the north of the country. It was thought that a Houthi victory might give Iran, Saudi Arabia's main regional rival, a foothold along Saudi Arabia's southern border. The campaign, however, failed to turn the tide in the war and led to little more than a prolonged stalemate in one of the worst humanitarian crises in modern history. Muhammad was also given control over the nation's primary policy-making body for economic development, the Council of Economic and Developmental Affairs, as well as the state-owned oil company Aramco. His ambitious development plans, such as his Vision 2030 plan to entice foreign investment for sectors other than its energy sector, included opening up Aramco for an initial public offering, IPO. However, some of these plans turned out to be overly ambitious. He thought Aramco would begin the biggest IPO in history as early as 2017, but the action was repeatedly postponed until the end of 2019. Crown Prince After being named Crown Prince in June 2017, Muhammad wasted no time in pursuing his bold objectives. Only a few days later, he oversaw a multi-nation blockade against Qatar, not only because of its cordial relations with Iran, but also because it supports rival non-state actors in the region, like the Muslim Brotherhood. Although the three-year blockade caused Qatar a short-term crisis, the country used its wealth to reorient its economy away from reliance on other Gulf states. At times his assertiveness abroad backfired and led to international backlash. In November 2017, Lebanese Prime Minister Saad al-Hariri resigned suddenly under suspicious circumstances while on a visit to Riyadh. Only after significant international pressure was Hariri allowed to return to Lebanon, where he promptly put his resignation on hold. The details of the unusual incident were never revealed, but Muhammad captured the world's suspicions when he joked about kidnapping Hariri at an investment conference a year later.
Dozens of Saudi princes, business executives, and top government officials were detained at around the same time as Hariri's strange resignation. The operation was presented as a crackdown against corruption. But many observers believe the real goal of the sweep was to consolidate power in Muhammad's hands because the jailed persons included some of the richest and most influential people in the nation, including multi-billionaire Prince Al-Wali bin Talal. Many were only allowed to go free by giving the state a portion of their corporate control or after spending enormous sums of money. It was believed that the Saudi government is estimated to have made over $100 billion from the action. Muhammad had first been praised overseas as a reformer at home, despite the apparent shakedown. His policies started to loosen many of the stringent social constraints for which Saudi Arabia was renowned, much to the dismay of conservative Saudis and the Wahhabi religious establishment. His efforts to increase tourism in the kingdom led to the lifting of a prohibition on movie theaters and the admission of women to athletic activities. He said in 2018 that women are not need to wear an abaya, a long black cloak, in public, loosening the strict dress rules. Later that year, women were granted access to driving privileges, enabling them to commute to work or go to school or run errands unaccompanied. Still, it seemed that economic benefit, not a passion for freedom, was driving these liberalization efforts. Women were given new options that would enable them to make money and spend it without needing their male guardian's constant assent or transportation, but the government also repressed female activists who persisted in calling for further liberties. Khashoggi's death. Muhammad planned Jamal Khashoggi's extrajudicial execution overseas in October 2018. Jamal was a well-known journalist and exiled government critic who had previously worked as an advisor and aide to a Saudi ambassador. Saudi agents lured Khashoggi into the Saudi consulate in Istanbul on Muhammad's orders, where they tortured and dismembered him. Recep Tayyip Erdogan, the president of Turkey, led the protests against the killing, which was carried out on Turkish land against a dissident living in exile and raised questions about state sovereignty and human rights internationally. Muhammad's reputation abroad had been damaged, but the consequences was limited as the royal family consistently disclaimed culpability for the affair. As the virus spread over the world in March 2020, Muhammad detained other Saudi royal family members once more. The inmates, who were reportedly being investigated for treason, included princes who were far closer to the throne, such as Mohammed bin Nayef, the former crown prince whom Mohammed bin Salman had replaced, and Ahmad, King Salman's brother. In the meantime, the pandemic's economic effects and Russia's invasion of Ukraine restored Mohammed's standing as a major actor in the world economy in 2022. Mohammed was enthusiastically welcomed by Erdogan in Turkey in June despite the fact that high oil prices and inflation were plaguing the global economy. And despite U.S. President Joe Biden's initial determination to exclude Mohammed from discussions on U.S.-Saudi relations, Biden had a face-to-face -face meeting with Mohammed in July during a prominent visit to Saudi Arabia. The position of prime minister, which typically reports to the king and is in charge of the council of ministers, was given to Muhammad in September 2022. Khalid, his younger brother, took over as defense minister. Muhammad aimed to promote more friendly and stable relations abroad after solidifying his de facto position as Saudi Arabia's top policymaker. He allegedly said in October that he would normalize Saudi Arabia's relations with Israel, just as Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates, and other Arab nations had done recently. However, the offer was subject on the United States' reaffirmation of its commitment to the nation's security and to assisting it in establishing a civilian nuclear program. But when the United States remained unmoved, Mohammed turned his attention elsewhere. Saudi Arabia and Iran reached an agreement in March 2023 to re-establish relations after years of rivalry between them that wreaked havoc on the region. 
China acted as mediator throughout the negotiations. The agreement hinted that an end to the Yemeni civil war, a Saudi-Iranian proxy conflict that has become an expensive and damaging snare for Mohammed's plans. The diplomatic success also deepened Saudi relations with China, a potent rival and counterbalance to the U.S. that Mohammed might use in negotiations with the U.S. superpower. In fact, the offer to normalize relations with Israel in exchange for U.S. guarantees on security and nuclear technology was reaffirmed just hours after the agreement was announced. Described as brutal and aggressive prince, the crown prince still commit his actions as for the good of his nation and its integrity. Despite of being titled as a murderer and oppressive leader, Bin Salman still looked forward to building a good relations with other nations. That's for tonight on the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. Be sure to react and share your thoughts on this document, and don't forget to subscribe to Discovery Daily. Stay blessed. Attention.